So I'm here in Barcelona today and I've just been to the official announcement of the Panasonic Lumix S1 and S1R cameras. Now we have the S1R here, so that's a 24.2 million pixel full frame sensor. And then there is the S1R, which is a 47.3 million pixel sensor. Now the big deal with these cameras is we've gone full frame obviously, but we've also got the L mount. Now this is the L mount that is used on Leica's cameras such as the, the Leica SL. And Panasonic have gone into partnership with Leica and with Sigma, and they've all joined together to work on this L mount. As we know, it was announced at Photokina. Now today, Panasonic are really proud to again, reestablish that alliance between the three companies. And we had somebody from Leica and also from Sigma come up on stage and state what they're gonna be doing over the next year or so. We've got, I think it was 42 lenses to look forward to. That's a lot of glass obviously produced by Leica, Panasonic and Sigma. So there's gonna be a really, really quick ecosystem built around these cameras. So in my hands, I've got the S1R and I've got one of the new lenses. It's a 24 to 105 F4 lens. And I've been using this now for about an hour or so, so I can give some quick first impressions just on kind of the handling of the body. First off, it feels big. We're talking kind of enthusiast, kind of size DSLR kind of big. So an APS-C enthusiast DSLR, D300, that, that kind of size. There's a big grip here, it really kind of, you have to really hug it with your hand around there. Now, personally, I think it could do with a bit more contouring on the back. And the rubber material is just a tiny bit hard here. Can't say that I'm a huge fan of that, but there is plenty to hold on to. So if you've got big hands, you're, you're going to enjoy using this camera quite a lot, I think. Again, it's just that edge just there, I think it's a little bit too sharp. I prefer something a little bit smoother just on this arch. But hey, that's me just being really picky. And you get used to all of these things in time. It just depends what system you're working from. The body of this camera is absolutely littered with buttons. They are absolutely everywhere. If you've used a sort of GH5, GH5S, it's gonna be very familiar. You've got your white balance, your ISO, and your exposure compensation just on top there. Front and rear dials, shutter button there. And usefully we have a little light so you can illuminate the buttons and the LCD screen. Another thing I'm not already a huge fan of is the location of the power button. I much prefer having it nearer to the shutter so that you can quickly pull it out your bag, flick the power on, take a shot, all sort of without looking. You kind of have to just hunt around a little bit for that on and off switch just in that location there. Not a deal breaker, but ergonomically something that already could, I think could definitely be improved upon. Now, speaking of high-end features, we've got a top LCD screen, something we don't have on the Sony cameras. It's really nice to see here. Again, it kind of harks back to enthusiast and pro DSLR cameras which use this screen, and it makes it really easy to see these settings without having to rely on using the rear LCD screen. So speaking of the back and the rear LCD screen, it's pretty huge on here, and they've opted for a kind of double hinge mechanism. So you can tilt it as usual, and then with the flick of this catch, you can also kind of shoot it like that for portrait images. Now they went to great pains to argue the point about not being able to sort of flip it under or to the side to shoot yourself. And their argument was that this is a professional sort of high-end camera. So what they wanted was access to the sockets on the side. So we've got full size HDMI there. And obviously if you tilt a screen round, it can obstruct those sockets. You have to think about where you're gonna place the screen. So that was the argument, keeping it as a very high-end professional camera. That's why I haven't gone for the front-facing screen. Obviously HDMI out, you can put a screen on top if you so wish that you can film yourself. But they did go to pains to state the strength of this screen. So wish me luck, but you can hold it and wiggle it around there. And I'm a bit nervous about doing this, but as you can see, the hinges on there are pretty strong. This isn't a light lens. In fact, the camera overall isn't very light at all. I'll put the exact weight of the camera and the lens up on the screen now, but it certainly feels like you're carrying a, a really weighty bit of kit. So the back is also littered with buttons and dials as you would expect. Everything you need is the hand. We've got a joystick on the back there so you can quickly select the AF point. But remember, we've also got touchscreen as well, which makes it very easy to switch that AF point around quick menu here has got a nice touch if you hold it down just for a couple of seconds it opens up a separate quick menu for video um, and a single press does it for stills photography so again very quick to access those settings that you need to quickly 
Now we've got dual card slots here. It will take SD cards or XQD cards, and it will also take the new Compact Flash Express or whatever it's gonna be called when that eventually happens. That will be a firmware update that should be coming to the camera. On the other side, as I said, we've got HDMI. We've got full USB-C connectivity, and I believe that can also power and also quick charge the cameras. That's something I'm gonna give a try. And then just at the top here, headphones and mic sockets. So we're fully kitted out for video, which is something that this camera is really gonna excel at. Now, as you can imagine from a Panasonic camera, they have gone all out when it comes to video. We have got up to 60p 4K internal recording on both these cameras. Now, currently the cameras both record 8-bit 420 internally. We can get 8-bit 422 via the HDMI out. But in the future, the S1 is gonna have 10-bit 422 internally, and it's gonna be able to do 10-bit 422 60p on the 4K via the HDMI socket. Now, in terms of actual shooting video, we were really pushed for time. So all I got was this clip of Mr. Gordon Lang as we were walking back to the coach. The light was starting to dim, and you can see that actually the image stabilization works really well. The lens and camera combine to mean that you get up to six EV stabilization when you are shooting stills. You can see how the autofocus is working. And in the low light, I have to say there's a couple of points during this clip where it just struggles a little bit. Anyway, once again, it is a pre-production camera, but it's gonna be interesting to see how Panasonic's kind of depth from defocus, their contrast detection AF technology works compared to some of the competition, which obviously has phase detection AF. We'll look at that in more detail in our full review video. Now the camera also has a slow motion mode. It will shoot up to 180 frames a second. However, there are some caveats with that. It will only shoot in a automated exposure mode. So the camera is gonna be picking your shutter, your aperture and your ISO sensitivity for that. And also you have to manually focus with that mode. Just doing some portrait shots now with the S1, so I'm hooked up to a bronze color flash system. And one of the cool features on the S1 and the S1R is we've got eye detection AF, so we should be able to see that working now because I'm recording the feed out of the camera. So what's quite cool is you get the square over the face and then kind of a crosshair which goes onto the eye. But interestingly, it seems to be picking up that pillow actually as an animal because the S1 and the S1R also have kind of animal and sort of pet detection as well, which is kind of crazy. Anyway. Now for these selection of portraits, I use the 50 millimeter F1.4 lens. And it is a lovely lens, although once again, it is very heavy and it isn't cheap either. But when you see the final images, the, the performance of the lens looks lovely. These are straight out of camera JPEGs. It's pin sharp on the eye. There's lovely soft focus as you head into the outer focus areas of the image. And this shot was actually, I think, at F4. So something I quite like is that the shutter sounds really nice and sort of dampened and soft. It, Kind of a bit like a Leica shutter sound. It's uh, yeah, it just sounds nice. Let's see, one, pick it up on the mic. Hopefully, you'll be able to pick that up and hear that. So one of the other cool features of both the S1 and the S1R is the high resolution shooting mode. Now this uses the pixel shift technology. So it's just moving that sensor around and it takes multiple images very quickly, one after another. So with the S1R, you can get 187 million pixel resolution image or you can get 96 million pixels if you're using the standard sort of S1 camera. Now I've got to talk about the EVF on this. It's nearly a 6 million pixel resolution with a magnification of 0.78. It's just huge when you hold it up to your eye. It's lovely and bright and clear. There's tons of detail. It also has a 60 frames a second refresh rate or 120 frames a second refresh rate. Now obviously, 
the 120 frames a second refresh rate is going to eat up a little bit more of the battery but it's quite useful if you kind of want an ultra realistic refresh rate very useful if you're shooting something that's moving quickly shut up now speaking of power we've got a brand new battery for the S1 and the S1R. Look at this, this is a pretty substantial battery here. I'll put the number of shots that, according to the SEPA guidelines, that you'll get just up on the screen. But again, this should last quite a while. I think it's gonna be around 400-ish shots. So a few first impressions of using the camera so far. I like it, but there's a lot going on. There's so many buttons and dials, and I've only really had my hands on the camera for about sort of two or three hours can't really investigate everything that is and set it up exactly how you want it but there's a lot here that's going to be familiar to people who use a gh5 for example building and handling wise again lots of buttons and dials you should be able to customize it as you want the body feels very tough and rugged we've got 100 percent weather sealing coverage and panasonic claim that it's going to work down to minus 10 which sounds quite like a big deal but you know people shoot in far colder conditions with absolutely no problem i'm sure you'll be able to use it in colder conditions than that af wise again it's really difficult to judge in the conditions that we've been under and the firmware on this camera is actually 0.7 so it's important to, to state that they're still working on it to me it seems reasonably fast if you've got it in single spot but i'm not really in the best position to judge like i said not had my hands on the camera for very long what i do like is the touch screen it is very sensitive possibly too sensitive at times now i'm a i'm a left eye shooter which means my cheek sort of rubs up against the side of the screen sometimes so i need to remember to turn that af point off but when you're using face detection and eye detection, it locks on pretty quickly. You get a nice crosshair as to where the subject's eye is and what it's focusing on. It all seems to work quite smoothly from what I can see. So I'm just back at the hotel now and sadly I have to give the Panasonic Lumix S1 back, but this won't be the end because I'll be reviewing the camera shortly, hopefully. It's due out in March, so it won't be too much longer before I can do a, a full review and some more tests. But just before I came back inside the hotel, I was actually able to try out the image stabilization and I handheld a shot at quarter of a second. So then I thought I'd push it to half a second and it pretty much nailed it it's really good so what you see on screen now is a shot half a second long and you can see from the the movement in the cars in the traffic trails there just how much movement there was and yet the trees in the back nice and sharp so the six stop image stabilization certainly seems to live up from the hype from what i've been able to see but again we'll do some more thorough tests when i get my hands fully on the camera so that's it make sure you keep an eye out for that full test hit the subscribe button so you don't miss it and keep up to date with all the latest photo gear news and reviews